In 1946, George Brock Chisholm, first director of the World Health Organization, gave three lectures, laying the foundation for sex education and sensitivity training in America's public school system. Their goal was, severing children's beliefs and morality from the influence of their elders. The sensitivity training method he proposed was imported from Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union. Chisholm said, they would replace the conventional concept of right and wrong in accord with the Kabbalah. The Kabbalah is the unacknowledged religion of the West, a fact that will become evident over time. It is the belief system of Freemasonry and organized Jewry, the two forces that govern the world. It is the reason God and the Ten Commandments have been banished from public life, why Christianity has been gutted and replaced by moral relativity. In its current form, the Kabbalah was created by Isaac Luria. Luria, also known as Isaac Ashkenazi, attracted a large number of followers who gave him the title of Ha'ari, or the Lion, because of the initials of the phrase Haloki Rabbi Yitzhak is, the Divine Rabbi Yitzhak. Back to the topic. The Kabbalah was created by him. He derived it from the Zohar, a 13th century 23-volume work, by a Spanish Jew, Moses de Leon. According to Wikipedia, Moses knew how to charm with brilliant and striking phrases, without expressing any well-defined thought. He was a ready writer, and wrote several mystical and Kabbalistic works in quick succession. These books were arguments against assigning any moral attributes to God, or the Endless One, or Ein Sof. He argued that distinction between good and evil place limits on the infinity of the Ein Sof. Further, Ein Sof is so transcendent that God's not in this universe, and has no direct interactions in it, but can be known through ten emanations, or qualities of energy, called, the Ten Sephard. The Sephard are the ten circles depicted in the Tree of Life diagram pictured in the Zohar and Kabbalah. These mysterious medieval elements continue to intrigue credulous minds, and made it a Middle Ages bestseller. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. Watch till the end, to avoid misunderstanding. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. Thank you. The Kabbalah is largely based on the Zohar. According to the Jewish Encyclopedia, this is its origin. There is a story, told about how after the death of Moses de Leon, a rich man of Avila, named Joseph, offered the widow, who had been left without means, a large sum of money for the original from which her husband had made the copy, and she then confessed that her husband himself was the author of the work. She had asked him several times, she said, why he had chosen to credit his own teachings to another, and he had always answered that doctrines put into the mouth of the miracle-working Simeon ben Yohai, would be a rich source of profit. The specious notion of a Jewish secret mystery school complete with systems of divination and reality-altering magic, created a sensation among Jews throughout Europe. However, the scholarly Sephardic Jewish leaders in Moorish Spain, dismissed the Zohar as a hoax, full of heretical and dangerous ideas, and banned it. When the Catholics regained control of Spain from the Moors and expelled the Jews in 1492, the dominance of Sephardi culture over Jewry waned. Many intellectuals went into exile in Jerusalem, where Isaac Luria was teaching the Zohar. The ban forbidding study of the Zohar was lifted in 1540, when the balance of power shifted to the Ashkenazi rabbis. Luria's Kabbalah opus was published after his death, and Kabbalah replaced Hakira, or Mishn Torah, as Judaism's mainstream theology. The main reason for mainstreaming Kabbalah was, to underpin belief in the arrival of the Messiah, and with it, Jewish world dominion. Rumors spread like wildfire, that the arrival of the Mashiach, or Messiah, was at hand. In the midst of this wishful fervor, the infamous Kabbalist, Sabbatai Zivi, announced in Smyrna in 1666, that he was the Messiah. Over a million Jews worldwide became his followers, called Sabbatians. Jacob Frank took up a torch in the 18th century, and the movement which spawned the Illuminati was called, Sabbatian Frankists. Sabbatai Zivi preached the satanic doctrine, praised be he who permits the forbidden. He reasoned that doing good keeps the universe too balanced, and slows down the return of God. Therefore sin is virtue, and observance of the Torah morality was the sin. The essence of Satanism is to turn good and evil on their head. Sabbatai Zivi's movement thrived until he promised to overthrow the Caliph of Istanbul. The Caliph gave him the choice, converting to Islam or execution. Sabbatai Zivi converted without hesitation, telling his followers to do the same. Conversion to Islam was a bit over the top for many rabbis who excommunicated the Sabbatians. However, a core of followers converted with him. Rabbi Martin Antelman believes, an unknown number of Sabbatai's followers, returned to the mainstream fold of Judaism, but remained secret practitioners of the cult. 
The Nobel Prize-winning Yiddish storyteller Isaac Bashevis Singer recounted legends among pre-Holocaust Jews in Poland of entire villages that succumbed to these satanic Kabbalists. His novel, Satan and Gore, is devoted to this subject. Sabbatianism went underground and a century later had a revival as the semi-secret cult of Jacob Frank. When Adam Weishaupt's branch of the Illuminati was exposed, Amschel Mayer Rothschild set Frank and his cult up in Frankfurt as the new head of the Illuminati. Frank followed Sabbatai's EV strategy of pretending to convert to a target religion in order to infiltrate and destroy it. Frank later returned to Poland with his followers and converted to Catholicism. His sponsor had been the King of Poland. But within a year, his infamy was obvious and he was imprisoned. The Kabbalah is a hoax, but one which governs our deluded and degenerate society. For the Kabbalist, good and evil are relative, so, evil is an illusion. Instead of right and wrong, Kabbalah says every action is like the moon, with a light side and dark side. The Kabbalists say that the adept must embrace his or her dark side to become a fully integrated human being. Not everyone who studies Kabbalah becomes a Satanist. But, Kabbalah is a prerequisite for all Luciferian practitioners. Albert Pike, the 19th century Pope of Freemasonry, said Masonry worships the devil. The Masonic religion should be, by all of us initiates of the higher degrees, maintained in the purity of the Luciferian doctrine. If Lucifer were not God, would Adonai and his priests calumniate him? Yes, Lucifer is God, and unfortunately Adonai is also God. For the eternal law is that there is no light without shade, no beauty without ugliness, no white without black, for the absolute can only exist as two gods. Morals and Dogma by Albert Pike, cited in Lady Queensborough, Occult Theocracy pages 220-221. There is only one God. Lucifer is the spine-chilling vacuum that results from the absence of God. The Kabbalah is a hoax that allows its followers to reformulate reality to serve their selfish interests. This is why they teach that truth is by its nature subjective. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This Everything Inside Me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.